film that's playing in the festival this year is called It's Not Goodbye. Um, my rough synopsis of it is that uh, two friends have like one last little talk before one of them is about to move across the country. Um, and then they realize maybe there's some unresolved feelings between the two. And, you know, I'll leave the rest as a surprise, I suppose. <laughs> so how'd the development for this one come? Is this something you drew from your personal life? Uh, this one was weird because uh, I do a lot of writing and uh, there was a screenplay competition that I wanted to enter. And it's like a 48 hour screenwriting festival. Mm -hmm. And they had like conditions, like it needs to be set in one room. She has sunglasses on and that was one of the prompts where it's like, oh, you ha they have to be wearing sunglasses. And I, I wanted it to be an organic thing. So I thought like sunglasses, what can you do with that? Maybe it hides like a crying type of thing. And I was like, well, what would bring her to tears? I kind of worked backwards from some of the prompts, but I just, you know, I really like stories about just characters like talking and kind of dancing around what they really want to say to each other. And then I do tend to write a lot of like LGBTQ uh, type stories as well. And so I'm always just trying to see if like that's something I can do with, with a lot of the stories I do as well. And then also I wrote it so that she was moving out so that the room could just be empty because I suck at set decorating. And uh, I was like, I don't have to set deck. It could just be an empty room. <laughs> uh, and then it kind of turned into a nice thing because it made the empty wall that she's staring at. Like if you see the movie, you'll know what I'm talking about. Like turned it into a bit of a metaphor for like possibility and be something being gone and things like that. So I had a lot of fun just kind of spinning those ideas around, but it actually didn't do that well in the competition. And I think I kind of almost spitefully was like, I really like this story. I want to make it. So I just kind of was like, screw it. I'm going to, I'm going to film it. <laughs> and then I, everybody that helped me out did like a, an amazing job on it. I'm really happy with how it turned out. <laughs> Sorry, I'm really long winded. <laughs> it great uh, sound bites. <laughs> So, like, as you've continued, um, like, your filmmaking career, you've kind of stayed within the film. Mm -hmm. So how have you seen that evolve, or, like, how have you seen the things change in, in, in your time as a filmmaker? Oh, that's a good here? question. Um, yeah, I do think Fort Wayne is evolving. I remember, you know, I, I came to filmmaking pretty late. It wasn't until college, so it had been, like, around, like, 2010 mm -hmm. that I started being like, oh, you can, like, write scripts and make movies and stuff and thankfully it was around a time where filmmaking started becoming accessible because it used to be such a gargantuan thing to get involved with right. but as it becomes more digital and mobile and accessible like I think the simultaneous rise of availability of like equipment has helped us flourish because obviously we here in Fort Wayne we don't have like a concrete film industry but as I've you know stayed here and tried to make stuff I've just noticed that there's like all these amazing companies coming up that do commercials and videography and documentary and then lots of students like even the schools around our area have started to lean a little bit more into videography and filmmaking and so we're just producing a lot more people that are interested in that and then I mean everyone's like got creative bones in their body but I think as filmmaking has become more viable it's obviously uh, really Fort Wayne's always been a creative town. I've always said that we have one of the best theater communities around. And that, that's where I've always gotten a lot of my actors from. But now I'm starting to run into people that actu actually do do more scre screen acting instead of just stage acting and stuff. And so uh, you know, Fort Wayne's music scene's great, their theater scene's great. And I think the film scene is, you know, getting stronger here too. And it's, of course it is, because we're very creative here. <laughs> so how do you think um, Hobnob and Film Festival is kind of help the community as a whole? What do you, what's the most valuable aspect of Hobnob and to you? I think it creates a really good nexus point having a film festival, specifically film oriented thing here in Fort Wayne, because like I said, there's a lot of creative people here, but I think we have a lot of music festivals and you know, great theater things and they're having events all the time, but we haven't really had anything to gather around for the film community. And I think it creates like a hub like I think Cinema Center has done a really good job in general of trying to become a place where we can actually gather and meet because like there's nothing more collaborative than filmmaking and so it's ironic that it's been almost one of the hardest things in the city to get people together for and so by having an actual real legit good film festival here uh, it just you know I, I love that 
they, as, as it's grown, they've really worked on like having workshops and filmmaker speed datings back this year, which was like my favorite thing we did last year. And uh, it's just so helpful. It's, it's called Hobnob. And then I've always kind of like, I do this weird like elbow motion when I say the name, because I think about it as a place to like meet other creative people. Mm -hmm. And I've met people that I still work with and talk to at this festival. Uh, so it's like, it's great for that. <laughs> So what do you think, like, somebody who wants to start off on their filmmaking journey, like, what do you think is the best avenue to do that besides just doing it? Besides that? Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, you took my answer. Uh, there, there, really, uh, there really is no other better way than getting on set and just learning. Uh, I, was, I was fortunate enough to go to a school where we did have some filmmaking classes. Uh, and so I learned some of the nitty gritty stuff. I learned how to format a screenplay because I took a screenwriting class. And th the thing is, it just always pales in comparison to actually being on set and doing it. So my number one answer is just get on set and do it. And like we said, there are people that are out there doing it. And there's plenty of places to like find someone that's making a movie, be a PA, make connections. But you know, it is important to study too. And thankfully there's just so many things now, like you can find a YouTube video for anything and you can become specialized in anything if you're really, you need to find what you like though. Cause everyone has like, everyone ends up gravitating towards something specifically. Like a reason I like directing is I really like working with actors and like coaching them through like what I need from their performance and stuff like that. And so that's what draws me to that. But some people just love the tech. They love the camera and you won't know that until you get your hands on it. Or, or they love sound. They love, they love post sound making fully. They love editing. They love being a colorist. And you won't know it until you try it. But it, it is important to dabble in everything. And so like, uh, you know, try chopping together some clips from other movies and making a reel and seeing if you really like editing. Like, it's, it is something that only can come with experience, I think, but uh, there are a lot of things you can do for free, like looking up online classes and writing is free. It's hard, writing's really hard, but uh, I think there's a reason why a lot of people are drawn to that, because that's something you can sit in your room and just like do by yourself <laughs> and, and figure stuff out. But uh, also just meeting people, like networking is, like it's hard. A lot of creative people are very introverted. I've always considered myself somewhat introverted as well. I've worked really hard on not being that <laughs> anymore, <laughs> learning how to talk to people. But networking is pretty much the most important thing. So you just have to, you know, and you can't be fake either. You, you can't, people sniff that out really quickly. You kind of just have to be yourself and be a generally decent person. And it, thankfully that tends to work out. People. You, you want to be the kind of person someone wants to be around uh, and and that they're going to want you back on set because they're like, that guy was awesome. I, I want him next time I'm doing a thing, you know, and I've, that's how I've made all my connections where it's just like I have someone on set and I'm like, that guy was excellent to work with and he knew his stuff. I, and then I call him the next time I'm doing something or vice versa, you know. Uh, so, yeah, doing it, I, I doing it is the bi biggest thing. But, you know, there's actually, you know, uh, here in Fort Wayne, they've made new film programs for college, and uh, you know I think it's Huntington. They have a pretty robust film program as well. I do wish I had gotten into filmmaking earlier because if I could have spent my entirety of my college years just making movies and like learning how to use tech, that would have been incredible. And and now that it's more accessible, I think that's a more viable route for people coming straight out of high school to like maybe dabble in filmmaking. Even here in Indiana, you, it used to be such a coastal thing and now you can do it almost anywhere uh but yeah i'll stop so, so before <laughs> i ask the last question for you um you have this film in the in the festival tonight are there any other projects coming up for you that you're working on <laughs> yeah uh i've uh i was talking earlier about finding the things that you like to do i've slowly found that i don't like editing so i actually do have a lot of things in post-production right now but there's some really cool stuff that is coming eventually because as I've worked with more people, I've been like, wow, I just really like the way they do that. Or I, I really fall in love with this kind of equipment and find more people that are really good at what they do. And so I do have, I'd say three films, short films in post right now that I'm really proud of. And 
part of what's taking so long is I really want to do right by the subject matter and the material. And, and there, there's one I shot back in January that after the weekend was over and we, we wrapped filming, I sat back and was like, that might be the best thing I've ever done. Like I, I felt, it feels nice to feel like you're actually getting better at what you do. Um, I'm hoping, I, I've been sort of shopping around a feature film as well. It's pretty contained, so I'm hoping it's doable. That's my dream though, is like, I love making short films and doing ideas and working with people and uh, shaking off the rust and stuff, but I want to do a feature, uh, a short feature, like it's not going to be. Uh, uh, years and years ago I made a feature, I co-directed a feature, and it was way too long, and I learned a lot of lessons from that, and it's like, when you're starting out, I think 90 minutes on the dot, uh, just contained and doable, but yeah, hopefully you'll see a feature from me in a year or two. <laughs> But who knows? Uh, but I'm always trying to make stuff. I've always said, even if I can never m make filmmaking my full-time career, I'm never going to stop making stuff. Uh, I'll, I, I like to have something for Hobnob in every year, right. too. So th that's always a great goal to have set. So, yeah. so, <laughs> so the last question here ties into that. And I, it's, I'm going to put you on the spot. So you got to finish this sentence. Okay. The <laughs> Film Festival is... A uh, great place to meet awesome filmmakers. Uh, that's my number one thing with Hobnobbin is I just love coming here and seeing the really cool stuff that other people come up with. It's just, I'm so in awe of like how creative people are and how talented people are. <laughs> and sometimes it makes you feel like a bit of an imposter, but just like seeing someone's work on screen and just being like, holy crap, and then just getting to talk to them and just bask in the uh, glory of, of other creative people is, is my favorite thing. But also I would say that they do such a great job of like picking good films every year. You, you can't miss with any block that you go to. Uh, the, the films are incredible and they get stuff from all around the world. I, last year I saw a Korean film and a French film that were like two of my favorite things I saw all year, bar none. Uh, and so, yeah, the people in the movies, I mean, that's what it's all about, I think. <laughs> awesome. That does it for me. So quick and easy, right? <laughs> <laughs> so.